Adventure. Escape a dungeon dark, dive into an ocean deep, or discover a planet unknown. There is only one rule. Always choose your own adventure, bros. Choose Your Own Adventure Bros is recorded live on the Fulcrum Entertainment Channel, where the audience chooses the story. This week, we are reading... J- Journey Under the Sea! Fucked that up. All right, Jackson, that wasn't Le- a very good start to my first try at this. I, I think it was fine. I thought that was the, the joke. I thought it was part of the video the first time you fucked it up. And I was just like, oh, <laughs> that's cool. Right? Like every time. Yeah, I, um, uh, I would, uh, space vampires. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that, that's not a bad joke. But unfortunately, <laughs> I was being sincere. Okay. <laughs> Genuinely thought that was... <laughs> <laughs> That's why I didn't say anything. I was kind of like, ah, oh, he's got, yeah, he knows. He knows. <laughs> well, I, I thank you for the trust, my brother. Okay, so we are here today to uh, start reading uh, some Choose Your Own Adventure books. So here on the oh, yes. Entertainment channel, yes, we are indeed. Uh, here on the channel, we uh, read Choose Your Own Adventure adaptation of uh, Star Wars: A New Hope, and that was an interesting thing. But now we're going to delve further into the. Is it a genre or is it a medium? The uh, Choose Your Ooh. Own Adventure. That's a that's a very good question. Um, I, I'm leaning towards it being more of a medium. Yeah, because you could have you could have a choose your own adventure book of any genre, can't you? Yeah, and indeed, I have a small stack of them behind me here, um, and they do span quite a few. You know, you've got like Caves of Fury sitting next to Sugarcane Island, so you know it's. Oh yeah, yeah, quite a, quite an expanse there. Yeah, so obviously we have the Star Wars one is sci-fi. We're looking into another version of sci-fi today with Journey Under the Sea, but obviously it's mm. the sort of uh, James Cameron kind of uh, the Abyss sort of sci-fi. Like I, I'd say it's when was this written? I'd say it's kind of Jules Verne kind of sci-fi. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. It is much more Jules Verne. So yes, this is Journey Under the Sea by R. A. Montgomery, the second. In the Choose Your Own Adventure book series. Don't know why we're not starting with number one. Basically, because I don't know what number one is. Um, I didn't bother to look. <laughs> I think I think Sugarcane Island was the first one that was written. Because I watched a little video about them the other day. And this is the, the Choose Your Own Adventure brand rather than the uh, the medium. Okay. Um, and I think he came up with it when he was just like making up stories for his daughters off the fly. And he started like allowing them to make choices within the story, and he thought, "Hey, I should write this down." <laughs> That's a good idea. So, yeah. sugarcane island is that more like actual sugarcane, or when you first said it, I thought we were talking like Candyland, kind of uh, Wreck It Ralph sort of stuff? I think there's elements of that, but I, I swear there's an ending where you get eaten by cannibals or something. So, <laughs> okay, right, yeah. So, so, so maybe it's more like actual like sugarcane. Yeah. So. Okay. So this one's Journey Under the Sea, very much like, say, Jules Verne, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, that sort of thing. And uh, Jackson, you are going to be my player today. So you are going to be our player character, and we will begin by setting the stage, which says here, you are an underwater explorer. You are leaving to explore the deepest oceans. You must find the lost city of Atlantis. This is your most challenging assignment. It is morning, and the sun pushes up on the horizon. The sea is calm. You climb into the narrow pilot's compartment of the underwater vessel Seeker with your special gear. I quite enjoy the vague description there of your special gear. I, I, I would hope it would be special. <laughs> you need something down special to go and find Atlantis. Yeah, I'm, I'm basically doing something that no one's ever done before. You know, There's no kind of rule book to this. <laughs> <laughs> so the crew of the research vessel Murray screws down the hatch clamps. Now begins the plunge into the depth of the ocean. The Seeker crew begins lowering by a strong but thin cable. Within minutes, you are so deep in the ocean that little light filters down to you. The silence is eerie as the Seeker slips deeper and deeper. You peer... (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Someone's using the outside tap. (laughs) Oh, no. Uh, Within minutes, you are so deep in the ocean that little light filters down to you. The silence is eerie as the seeker slips deeper and deeper. You peer out the thick glass porthole and see fish drifting past, sometimes stopping to look at you. 
an intruder from another world. And we have our illustrations of the ship Marais. Oh, now yeah. the cable attaching you to Marais is extended almost to its limit. You have come to rest on a ledge near the canyon in the ocean floor that supposedly leads to the lost city of Atlantis. You have a special sea suit that will protect you from the intense pressure of the deep if you choose to walk out on the sea bottom. You can cut loose from the cable if you wish, because the seeker is self-propelled. You are now in another world. So this is where we have choices. So, Jackson, if you decide to explore the ledge where the seeker has come to rest, we'll go to page six. But if you decide to cut loose from the moray and dive with the seeker into the canyon in the ocean floor, turn to page five. Mm. What option is piquing your interest? I think cut loose and and uh, explore the the what is it the trend the canyon on the ocean floor because you know we're we're here to find Atlantis supposedly this is the canyon that leads to Atlantis let's not fuck around let's let's yep yeah, no I like that yeah let, let's not stop at the gas station onto the way to the motorway yeah let's, let's do this okay so we're gonna follow that and I feel like th that's what this illustration is supposed to be is yeah. you going deeper down into the canyon with a real scared looking fish over here. Yeah. Well, I mean, you would be, wouldn't you? <laughs> so, page five, you radio a status report to the Murray and tell them that you are going to cast off from the line and descend under your own power. Your plan is approved and you cast off your line. Now you are on your own. The seeker slips noiselessly into the undersea canyon. As you drop into the canyon, you turn on the seeker's powerful searchlight. Straight ahead is a dark wall covered with a strange type of barnacle growth to the left, port, oh, so good that they educated me there. To the left, port side, you see what appears to be a grotto. The entrance is perfectly round, as if it had been cut by human hands. Lanternfish give off a pale greenish light. To the right, starboard side of the seeker, you see bubbles rising steadily from the floor of the canyon. So, do you want to investigate the bubbles on page 8, or would you rather investigate the grotto with the round entrance? Well... Atlanteans were human-like, weren't they? So the grotto with the round entrance. Let's let's check that out. I mean, okay. the bubbles. There's nothing good's going to come from bubbles, is it? No, not nothing good. No, I mean, was bubbles the worst Powerpuff Girl? She was my favourite. So, oh, interesting. Yes. I, actually, no, no, actually, I got that wrong. Bubbles, maybe. Bubbles is the blue one that talks to squirrels. Yeah, the green one. Buttercup was my favourite. Yeah, but I was going to say, I, I would have thought you'd like Buttercup. Yeah. Okay. But the best. Maybe I don't know. Blossom was kind of nothing, so I'd go probably go with Blossom as the worst. Oh, one. You, actually, yeah, you're right. Blossom was the Jean Grey of the group. While we're leaving bubbles to drown, uh, we're yeah. going to page eight. <laughs> no, hang on, page nine. Sorry, eight is four. Uh. You pilot the seeker through the rounded entrance of the grotto. Once inside, your searchlight picks up what appear to be docks and piers along the grotto walls. Oh, I think we cracked this. The seeker's searchlight is not very powerful. However, you do have a special laser light, which would light up the grotto like daylight. Unfortunately, the laser light can only be used twice for very short periods before it must be recharged aboard the Marae, now more than 2,000 feet above you on the surface. Very nearly said 20,000. Yeah, yeah. Jules Verne. So are we going to use that laser light, or are we going to just try and cruise further into the grotto? Let's, let's use I mean, What else are we going to use it for? You know, like, let's, let's use the damn thing. Okay, yeah, because this isn't the FPS shooter. We don't need to like save the rocket launcher for anything at the end. This is our special equipment that we were told about. Remember this, you know? Yes, yes, we have special gear. We got, we got to use it. Sixteen. The beam from the laser light illuminates the entire grotto. Far back on the floor of the grotto is a submarine. Cautiously, you maneuver the seeker closer. You identify it as the submarine that mysteriously disappeared in Bermuda. Sorry, in the Bermuda Triangle almost a year before. The Bermuda Triangle is more than 2,000 miles away. The submarine is apparently not damaged, but it is covered with a slimy algae. Beautiful fish swim around it as though it is their own special prize. Then you notice that the main hatch is free of algae. So I'm, uh, presumably they're, they're suggesting that it is being used more regularly. Yeah. When they say that they went missing in the Bermuda Triangle, because I kind of suspect yeah. all... Lost submarines being Nazi submarines. I mean, well, it's possible. <laughs> what are our options here? What to uh, go into the submarine on page 29 or cruise on through? So, this feels a little bit like a sort of cowardly decision to me if we kind of don't go into the submarine. Yeah, I mean, I kind of think 
this is like i mean this is this is another question isn't it this is uh another mystery in addition to the mystery of atlantis that we've got now and now we've got a submarine 2000 miles off its last known position absolutely with a suspicious door i think we have to yeah and you're absolutely right it ties together two historical mysteries doesn't it, it ties together the bermuda triangle and yeah. atlantis okay yeah we've got to see if we can wrap this all up in a bow so yeah. to page 29 yes big fish i feel like that was an ending we just saw or oh, we just yeah. cruised past an ending there 29 the submarine is indeed mysterious thanks we already leapt to that conclusion <laughs> yeah the, the mysterious element came across you now have on your sea suit and you open the hatch on the conning tower and enter the sub it is amazingly clean and in order there are no signs of life, but there are also no signs of struggle or trouble. In the control room, you see a piece of mystifying equipment that just doesn't belong on this sub. Wonder what what's that going to have been like? Again, this book. I think a lot of these books, because they're so short, they have the most vague descriptions. Yeah, like special gear and a mystifying piece of equipment. Yeah. yeah like, okay. Hmm. That could be anything. <laughs> yeah, it could be an Atlantean dildo for all we know. Yeah. So a voice begins telling you that thousands of years ago, the leaders of Atlantis realized that their continent was slipping into the sea. They discovered a large underground cavern and built new forms of living quarters for their people. Later, when Atlantis was deep beneath the ocean, some of their scientists discovered and perfected an operation enabling them to breathe underwater. Okay, I feel like they, they skipped the step there, but okay. okay. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let's run through that again. They discovered their continent was slipping into the sea. Yeah. They discovered a large underground cavern. Oh, okay, and, right. And built yeah. new forms of living. But I don't understand that. Like, like that seems to not be a like. Surely the solution is you just leave. I mean, As, yeah. If you're a normal person, but if you're an Atlantean, <laughs> apparently the solution is, ah, we can survive for a bit in this underwater cavern. It's not going to be great because it's an underwater cavern and presumably... So it's if, like they, they just like... If there's an air pocket, it's like, well, nothing will grow here and, you know, there's a limited air supply, so... Yeah, they're just like condemning themselves to existence <laughs> without light. Without yeah. fresh air, presumably an air pocket that is just filling with carbon dioxide. Yeah, okay. but it's okay because our scientists are, are, are on the job. <laughs> they are minutes away from from cracking, breathing underwater, guys. So you don't yeah. need to worry. Atlantis Elon Musk <laughs> put all of his money and then found Atlantis Jeff Bezos. And they were like, what we've done is we've made water lungs <laughs> okay so the voice which sounds friendly also tells you that there are two groups in atlantis one group is good and the other is evil the voice invites you to enter the world of atlantis and give directions and instructions to a secret passageway to the underwater city as you follow directions you spy an unbelievable underwater craft with several people in it it must be an atlantean ship but are there people good or evil, sorry, are the people good or evil? Do they know the secret passageway? So what are, what are our options? If we hurry in trying to reach the passageway without being seen, we go to 43, or if we rush back to the seeker trying to escape danger, turn to 44. Well, bollocks to that. Like, <laughs> this is what we, we, like, we came here to find Atlantis, right? We're, like, we're at least getting a photo or something, right? <laughs> I'm not leaving without a postcard. You know what I mean? Like, like. No, I, yeah, I, I'm 100% with you. It, that does feel like a way to failure. Okay. You escape being seen by the submarine craft. Following the instructions, you enter a passageway. At the end of the passageway is an airlock door, and beyond it, an incredibly large air filled cavern. Perhaps it is inside of an extinct volcano. That's a bit of a leap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you basing that on? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen so many of these. Ah, yes. Yeah. The land is pleasant. Although strange to your experience, a soft substance covers the ground. It seems to be alive. You can't tell. A gentle light comes from the sides of this huge cavern. It reminds you of early morning light just before the sun rises. A group of people approach you with friendly gestures. 
They are wearing simple clothes, much like the clothes people wore in ancient Greece. They are kind and generous. You remove your diving suit to find that the air is good to breathe. These people speak a language that is unknown to you, but one of them acts as an interpreter. You find out that this is Atlantis. They tell you it is governed by a man who is greedy, selfish, and dangerous. The people are like slaves. Everyone is unhappy, except a few who serve the ruler as his lieutenants. These new friends ask for your help. Perhaps you can help them escape. Mm. That's quite a turn. Yeah. In a single page, we've gone we've gone really far. Okay, so we've we've discovered Atlantis, like kind of yeah. like that. We're now overthrowing a slave slave owner. Okay, yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> you, you kind of said okay like you were prepared like you had a plan for this well i i, I have some thoughts on this okay right uh, uh, and, and, like you, you may call me a, a cold cold person here but um <laughs> like it's it's really not our job to sort out um <laughs> you know political unjustness in atlantis <laughs> on the one hand right and on the other hand, if we help them escape, we can bring them back with us and say, hey, look, here are some dudes that I found in Atlantis. Okay, okay. Oh, I yeah. great explorer. Right. So I'm very much leaning to it. And also, like, you know, like, I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, we've no reason to doubt these people, but there is, like, we've seen no evidence of any kind of, um, you know, wrongdoing by the part of the governor of Atlantis. <laughs> They, no, they don't no seem truth. to be oppressed. They're like they're, they're wearing ancient togas. That, you know? <laughs> I guess, but like if it turns, you know, if, if the leader's there, like wearing his jays, like he's just got regular old clothes. It's like, oh yeah, no, I forced them to wear bed sheets. That's a little different. I, well, yeah, I suppose. But I but know. you're right. We don't have evidence either way. We've just got what they've told yeah, us. Yeah, so we just no, have to either believe them. I'm going to need some more to go on. But in the meantime, if you want to escape into my research vessel. <laughs> <laughs> so do you want to help help these guys try to escape yeah yeah let's do yeah. that okay so that we can take them as specimens i i, I like that logic uh, i also quite enjoyed the sort of tng uh fan and you kind of came out with like the prime directive it is not yeah, a yeah, place yeah. to interfere with the public like well yeah well you know we, we can offer sanctuary to to those who are you know refugees or whatever but we you know we're not I'm not there to solve your your planet's problems. I'm sorry. I, yeah, I mean, we're already taking a risk going there with our special gear. We don't know what technological yeah. advancements we could cause with our special gear. <laughs> what happened to the piece of equipment on the submarine? Did we just leave that there? <laughs> I think we. I think we. Yeah, I think we left the submarine. <laughs> just that. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not sure because we we came out to go into the into the submarine. We, we were in this yeah. right. Hang on. So we came out of our submarine, went into someone else's submarine. A, a, a missing Bermuda submarine. <laughs> yeah, and then we came out, saw a third submarine. Yeah, and then we like avoided it to go into a secret passageway. Yeah, is where we're at. I think. Yes, <laughs> and then we met the oppressed, <laughs> and they were like, "Oh, why didn't you help us?" It's just like, well, first of all, like, who do you think I am? What do you expect me to do? <laughs> like, <laughs> if your it's, entire uh, yeah. population can't solve this problem, I'm just a guy, really, you know. <laughs> I, yeah, it does make it that this is more likely a grift. This is what no. they do to. This is what happened to the people on the Bermuda oh, uh, shit. submarine. Yeah. <laughs> they were told, "Come on, get us out of here. Bring us into your submarine. We'll escape." It was like if an alien landed, you know, outside my house. My first question to it would not be, "Can you please sort out the Tories?" You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know that's just, it just it just wouldn't. <laughs> They've got this leadership debate going on, and then the yeah, other like, like, I don't like yet. either of them. Like <laughs> one of them's a weird cheese woman. <laughs> okay, so page sixty-one. The okay. problem is, where did they escape to? The king is in charge. He rules the well. I'm sorry. He rules the world below the sea, and his spies are everywhere. The only answer is to devise a plan to capture the king and put <laughs> him in prison. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> is it? <laughs> because my submarine is like right there. <laughs> no, this book is adamant. You are not kidnapping these Atlanteans for your own purposes. <laughs> right. Uh, the people are frightened. Some citizens tried to revolt years before and are still in prison. Right, the king well, is smart. <laughs> 
<laughs> so you've done this once already and it failed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but um, but we'll do it again this time, right? <laughs> no, because because this time we've really studied the plans. It's exactly <laughs> the same as we did last time. They'll never see it coming. <laughs> God, well, use this guy. He just arrived. <laughs> Seems like the perfect leader. <laughs> to be fair, this is uh, very much. It's a very much of a game plot. There's a lot of video games that have this exact plot. Yeah, I I don't know. In games, they use there's usually some implication as to why they trust you. You're like you know like some badass fighter guy or something. And this, it's just like you're literally just a guy who's just shown up. <laughs> Presumably, like, still in your like scuba suit, like with like a mask. Just yeah, stuff. it's just like, oh, you can't even breathe underwater, this lad. Like, what the fuck are you gonna do? <laughs> oh yeah, he's surrounded by people with an incredible advantage over you. Yeah. <laughs> but he no, should lead the rest. <laughs> What's that? You want your king locking up? Like, right? <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> the king is smart and suspicious of everyone. You suggest a plan to put on a festival for the play <laughs> on a given. <laughs> Sorry, that's <laughs> that quite a hard left turn. It was like, right, guys, I know I've just turned up. I'm underwater. All the power of trick. My idea is we do. <laughs> I'm telling you about other people. We do 12 tonight. When they're changing clothes, you get out of here. Uh, <laughs> you, you put on a festival with a play. On a given signal, the actors and people in the audience will rise up and seize the king. The actors will be carrying real weapons, but no one will suspect them because they are in the play. The people like the plan. They ask you to become their leader. Of course they fucking do. This is such a stitch up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to be caught at the end of this. It's like, this dude, thank you very much. He led the revolution. So, do you accept their wish to become their leader, or do you decide to help them in the planning, but also to escape from this sad world? Oh, I mean, that's a tough one. Like, I'm, I'm genuinely torn on this one now. Yeah, like, okay, so there's a couple of bits in this, because there's like, there's like what you want to do, and also like, I think what the book wants you to do, and I feel like yeah, the book is yeah, really, without wishing really... to be better about it, yeah, I'm kind of like... <sighs> And I think from the player character point of view as well, there is a certain like real awkwardness in that of like, yeah. ah, no, guys, sorry. I'm an if this was man. a movie, I'd need a little something, you know what I mean? I'd need one of the Atlanteans to be like, you know, like a romantic interest for the for the hero, you know? Uh, like, like Disney's Atlantis. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, you, you need your Stargate reasons. I'd say, to yeah, I haven't actually seen Atlantis. I saw the one hey. that, was, that I thought was Atlantis, but it wasn't. It was the Treasure Planet one. I saw that one. All right, yeah, yeah. Um, no, but uh, that's okay. Is that like Stargate? Is it Stargate? Is it Stargate where it, does he does he have a chick that he stays behind, or does he just stay behind because he's a nerd? Um, I think he does make friends with like a, a lady, yeah, yeah, it's like that, um, yeah, exactly like that. It's yeah. very, I, I, I seem to remember it being quite chaste. He's just like they don't speak the same language, and it's like he's trying to teach her English, and it's sort of like, oh, look, I draw letters in the sand, and he's like. Oh. <laughs> It's been years since we've seen Stargate. I, I never liked it. I never thought it was good enough to be made into a series. <laughs> sure yeah, that, that cropped up in the comments. Reason, I was like, hate me, but I, I never liked it. I'm sorry. Oh, I, you know what? I've never seen anyone say anything about Stargate, good or bad. Really? It's never come up before on the channel. So I'll be I mean, interested to hear what people think. Admittedly, I never watched the series. I, I watched the movie like twice, and I was just like, yeah. It's fine. Yeah, I I watched the series a bit. I like I've seen a couple of episodes, and the guy from Farscape was in it for a little while. But by that point, weirdly, the lore of Star Stargate was kind of too deep for me to know what the hell was going on. And there yeah. was a one spin-off show with Jason Momoa. Anyway, so yeah, so do we feel like we're going to become their leader, or do you want to try and take the sensible route? I. Let's become their leader, and we can work out the the escape back to our vessel details later. Okay, like the, the, right. these, these people seem like they need they need help. I don't mean the help that they're getting. I mean like professional help. <laughs> you do not wish to lead a revolt, but the people need you. Okay, that's that's relatively accurate to our experience of playing the game. Yeah, you organize the play, and the king is pleased to have his people involved in a project that keeps them busy and happy. This is like this is getting a bit weird because for this king's 
point of view it is like a nice person in the community doing a community arts project yeah <laughs> and at some point this person's going to turn around and shoot him so the people can't wait for the day when they can put the king in prison and make their own decisions the night of the play the theater is filled and everyone waits for the king to appear but there is a delay the crowd grows nervous then a messenger from the king runs into the theatre and announces that the king has had a serious attack of brain fever. He may not live. You what? wonder whether the king... <laughs> brain fever, bro. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that, that totally didn't sound made up. But, uh... Oh, yeah, no, yeah, 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 my, yeah, my friend's cousin's dad. Yeah, yeah, he had brain fever. Yeah, it's pretty the... serious. So, uh, you wonder whether the king is really ill, or whether he has found out about the plot against him. The people are confused and do not know what to do. They turn to you and you tell them to go on with the play. Just then, a squad of the king's soldiers enter the theatre. They are headed for you. Uh, oh, this hasn't worked out so well. So, no. do we allow them to capture you? No. Uh, <laughs> okay, so 117. We try to escape. Yeah, uh, this is what we should have done originally. Like, <laughs> right? Okay, so one more one. See a lot of ends. Yeah, one more six. One more. Six. Oh, oh no. we found an ending. <laughs> How can you escape? The soldiers are coming after you. You yell as loud as you can, and everyone in the theater surrounds you, forming a barrier to the soldiers. The soldiers stare at the people all around them, hesitate, and then quickly leave. They know that the odds are too great to win such a fight. The people cry for the revolt to go on. The crowd leaves the theatre and heads to the king's quarters. All along the route, people join you, and even the king's soldiers begin to join the crowd. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they freaking hated this guy, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right. I just, it's like, it was like five o'clock on a Friday afternoon. Like, oh, yeah, no, I'm good. Yeah. Let's get yeah. out of here. If only we had some guy. <laughs> guy to lead us. <laughs> What? The people of Atlantis have been waiting centuries for some guy. <laughs> uh, does he have special skills? No. <laughs> he, he lacks the ability to breathe underwater. He's, he's, he's like the real OG. The <laughs> All along the route, people join you. Oh, yeah, and even the king soldiers join the crowd. You and the people are free. The king is put in prison. The revolt. Is a success. Yes, I think. Yeah, I we. I feel like, undeniably, you won. You won that book. Yeah, like I. It that kind of feels I, like it's not an ending, though. <laughs> no, it, it does feel a little weird. It's it's a little bit like um, the end of uh, Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Uh, yeah, or uh, the end similarly ending uh, the Chronicles of Riddick. Oh yeah, yeah. Because like, was that the first one? No, no, it wasn't. Was no, nah, no, 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 no. The first one's the good one. Uh, Pitch Black. Chronicles of Riddick is the rubbish one where he's king at the end of it. Of the... I haven't seen that one. I, I saw uh, Pitch Black and uh, that was it. Yeah, yeah, that, that wouldn't bother. No, um, yeah, Vin, Vin <laughs> Diesel, like, in the end of it, like, becomes king of the Necromongers, I think they're called. Uh, <laughs> <Right>. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the Space Goths. Um, and, yeah, and now he's, like, in charge of them. But he doesn't want to be, and it, it's it's like someone made a weird parody version of the final screen of Conquer. Okay. <laughs> no, Joe. You know what, what I'm impressed with is that we have avoided a lot of deaths. I think, like, like being an adult helps. <laughs> like, like, I'm just trying to do some <laughs> stupid shit. Like, I played the um, I played the Space Vampire one the other day, and I've got to say, the way I played it, the Space Vampire went down like a bitch. <laughs> it was like like the last choice I made in the game was just like you've heard that space vampires are renowned at hypnotizing and like yeah, controlling people with their minds. Do you talk to him? I was like, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's captured. I'm not fucking talking to that space vampire. <laughs> just like turned like made the choice like oh the end. Are oh, you in? Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> 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 That's that's good because I like one thing this game I think punishes you for is curiosity. So yeah. like this book, I know um, we might play again at some point to uh, to try and see more endings. But I know um, like we would we did some where we go oh let's explore this, and whenever you went oh let's explore this, you died. Yeah. Like and it wasn't always necessarily straight away. Like sometimes you'd have a couple of pages, but then you realize like ah oh, once you've taken that turning, there is no route out that isn't death. 
it's a good bedtime story book this isn't it because like you know, like if you're trying to get out quickly just be like uh, and uh make a choice <laughs> oh you're dead oh, like, no, no. <laughs> if you get a bad ending that kid's like what i've just been ripped off what the yeah, fuck is this we said we said we'd read it to the end you made the choices here we are you're dead <laughs> uh that'd be quite, it'd be quite good especially like if you had the ones like uh the star wars one that we did on the channel already where one of the earliest endings we got was you just go back to the farm and stay there <laughs> <laughs> and what did you learn kids do what you're told. Well, that I think has been a fantastic sort of taster of yeah. what the choose your own adventure bros can be. Yeah, that's really good. So, next time, it'll be really fun that we uh, go live and we'll get some people in the chat with us as well, influencing our decisions. So, we might not get to a happy ending so easily if uh, people in the chat are curious about what we're doing. Yeah, <laughs> is that what you? <laughs> Is that what you want to see? You want to see us crash and burn? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I think, well, because like these books are strange because also if you win all the time at these books, you don't see the book. You yeah. kind of have to lose to get the content. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff there we didn't, uh, the big fish we didn't see. <laughs> mm. But I would say I still find this far more bearable than trying to replay David Cage games. <laughs> like I, I played through, uh, what's it called? Uh, Detroit Become Human was furious all the way through because the sci-fi didn't really add up. And then it was like, mm, you missed 80 endings. Oh, <laughs> don't you want to go back and see everything? It was like, no, I do not. Thank you. That sounds like Shadow the Hedgehog was like that. It was just like, oh, there's like 12 <laughs> endings. I can't get to one because the controls suck. It was like, right. <laughs> all right, thanks. Ooh, shout of the hedgehog. <laughs> yeah, that was a deep the less said the better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. With uh, with that, we shall end that here. So thank you very much to everyone. If you are watching, uh, keep an eye on the channel. Make sure you have subscribed. Uh, click that bell icon to know when we go live, so you can play along with the next one that we do live on stream. And my friends, always remember that we are fulcrum. That's not the bit. I got it wrong. Doesn't matter. Let's play the outro. Yeah.